Welcome, everybody. I'm Neil Cavuto. And this just in, a lot of us are bummed out. And when it comes to these markets, really bummed out. Get this, one out of three Americans wants nothing to do with them. Nothing at all. They have no interest in stocks. Worse, they're afraid of stocks. They're afraid of putting their money in stocks. Yep, after the big run-up last year and the Dow and S&P more than doubling over the past five years, these folks ain't impressed. In fact, they are worried. This is stunning. One out of three Americans still that anxious, still that afraid, still that cautious. Now, I can understand after the big meltdown years ago, but it's been more than five years, and I think it's been more than that. It, it, it's, it's not the memories that are dying hard here. It's that a lot of folks are hardly getting by. They don't have the money to invest, and I suspect the uncertainties and unexpected costs surrounding the new health care law ain't exactly helping matters any. There's an old housing rule of thumb a realtor friend of mine once passed along. If you're feeling good at home, you're thinking about a nicer home. What she was also implying was if you're not feeling good at home, you're not thinking about a nicer home. You're worried. You're uptight. You're, well, sitting tight. I really think what ails this incredibly tepid recovery is how tepid it has made our expectations. We're grateful for so little because leaders are giving us so little. It's never amounted to much because for a lot of folks, this economy hasn't done much. It hasn't made them whole or healed their financial wounds. It, it hasn't restored their confidence or hope that their kids will have a better life than they have. It hasn't made Americans confident enough to commit their cash for much of anything. Oh, a car now and then, a brief spike in holiday sales here and there. But that is hardly the stuff of which booms are made. So back to this survey and these one out of three who want nothing to do with the markets. Let's say they really can't afford them or just leery of them or both. How long do you think a market boom can continue without them, without that many Americans participating in them or cheering them? I suspect not long because it keeps a lid on demand when so few want in and most of the others who are in are passive investors at best, automatically adding to their investments via 401k plans, mutual funds and the like. I bet you very few of those in these markets then are really in to these markets. So back to my premise about Americans losing a sense of promise. They don't trust politicians, neither a president who says you can keep your doctor when it turns out you can't, nor Republicans who promise you can count on them to tackle this massive debt, but they never do. Before you can get Americans back into these markets, you first have to get them back in to America. You have to win back their trust. You have to give them back somehow believing in what made this country great, taking risks, seeing rewards, and not being taxed to death, enjoying the fruits of their labor. It is hard to feel good about where you're going when you see where this country is going. When you see us hitching rides with the Russians, to get into space because we've given up on space or abandoning our leadership role in the world wide web in favor of some cockamamie notion of a new world order. You can't get people to think about stocks when so many fear this country's lost its soul because this isn't about a third of Americans afraid to take a chance on stocks in this country. This is about a third of Americans who say they can't be bothered because they've already taken stock of this country. It's not that these markets are to buy. This is a whole lot of folks now saying America is a sell. Not good. You can go on Team Cavuto on Twitter. Use hashtag Cavuto to tell me if you agree. But for now, my friend Swiss America Trading Chairman, one of the more astute market reads I know, Craig Smith, here to tell me what worries him. Craig, what do you make of that? I mean, I, I know Jimmy Carter once called it a malaise, but I think it's more profound than that. Uh, you, you know, Neil, if I wasn't hooked up to these wires right now, I would jump out of this chair. I would literally start singing the national anthem and start crying. And I, and I, I mean that, my dear friend. You just nailed it. People have lost their confidence of believing that their children are going to have a better future. And this whole great experience we call America is all based on confidence. Confidence that our leaders will do what they say that they will do. Confidence that our leaders will not lie to us, like Harry Reid standing at the podium and saying, I've got tax returns on Mitt Romney. He didn't pay any tax returns. Or These people are lying he about lied. their health care crisis. Right. lied in the middle of a hot political season. I knew it. C completely same thing with our president, okay? And, Neil, gosh, this monologue should be posted everywhere in America because you've got to the root of the problem, Neil. How can you ask people to invest in the future of this country, the greatest country in the history of the world, when we have a leader that will not lead, that will draw a red line, 
and then just walk past it or look to the other side when somebody takes into uh, uh, like the Crimea or to do the things that this president is doing. And I'm sorry to lay this all at the president's feet. But, Neil, on the way down here, I was thinking about, remember the budget battles and, and the debt ceiling, uh, you know, raises and all that was going on? Right. This president basically went to the airwaves and said, if we don't do this, we'll see stocks fall apart, our bond market will fall apart, our credit ratings will be destroyed. Is that what a president does? No, a president makes you feel confident in the future of this country. But what has happened and to the— My you, dear you friend, you the, nailed it. But, you know, Craig, when you follow the numbers, and you follow them much more closely than I do, and we're grateful, OK, oh, well, the GDP might—we might make 3 percent. If we really work hard, we might get up to 3 and a quarter percent. And you and I can remember in, 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 in boom period when that 5 or 6 or 7 percent—I mean, that was like China-type growth then, when, 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 when job growth during a recovery was 500, 600, 700,000. And jobs a month. Right. And, and now, if it, if it cracks 100, we kind of cross our fingers and say, well, let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. It's like our expectations have been lowered to the point where we're grateful for so little, we forget that we, we, we've, we've made ourselves little. Well, and I think that you, you made that right in your opening statement. We expect so little because we get so little from, from Washington So what do we do? Now. What do you tell I your mean, friends and what, your kids and colleagues? What do you tell them to do? I mean, you can do the share of the moonstruck thing and slap someone and say, snap out of it. But what do you do? You know, Neil, it's very difficult. We speak to thousands of people a day, as you know, at our, at our, at our company. And I got to tell you, the number one thing that, r that rings true is people are scared right now. They don't know what the future holds. And what we tell them from a financial perspective is obviously be diversified, have stocks, bonds, treasuries, insurance, annuities, gold, you know, be well diversified in your portfolio. But you have to start believing in this country again. And, Neil, until we see some leaders stand up, and I think we're starting to see that. I think you're seeing that with the Rand Pauls and the Ted Cruz's and some of the guys that are really willing to start drawing the line and saying, OK, we're going to cut spending. We're going to take the political risks necessary well, to, to make that they happen. They have to meet it and follow up on it. But I hope I you're sure right. I sure hope they do. I hope you're right, well, Greg. Neil, that's something. what it's going to take, because you put it in your, in your opening statements, Neil. If we want America to be great again, look, Americans are great. America could be great again. Americans are looking for us to be told we can be great again. Very well put. Craig Smith, thank you very much. I'll leave you with this final thought, folks at home. Uh, this latest astronaut.